so yesterday a dog came to me um it was such a little cute dog that it looks like a it looked like a cow um and it was hungry and it's like skinny and scared and timid and it got bruises on his face and things like that right and i really wanted to take it in i was like you could come you could come be with me you could hang out with me if you want to but i have i had wing stop yesterday and I still had chicken left over. So I gave the dog my chicken, my leftover chicken, uh, my lemon pepper boneless wings um, to eat. He was fucking up. I wish I had more for him. He was so hungry. He was so hungry and so cute. And I really wish like, I could just took him in. But then I was like, bitch, <laughs> you can't barely feed you. Like Every time I try to take a stray in, like even with Papa, like I could not feed her. And that's why I had let her stay with her daddy. <laughs> I gave her to my cousin. Um, and then when my cousin got her, that's when my aunt started buying cat stuff and shit. But when I had moved in with my aunt and them, and I'm like, but you wasn't doing that for me, whatever. <laughs> but anyways, um, so I gave him my my nuggets. Then today, Spirit had put on the McDonald's app free chicken nuggets. So I got free chicken nuggets and I got a whole McDonald's meal for a dollar. So I got the free chicken nuggets and then I had on the little app, you get a large fries for a dollar. And so I'm so fucking full right now. I'm so fucking full. Such a good meal, okay? Them chicken nuggets taste good today. Usually them chicken nuggets taste nasty, but they taste real good today, okay? Um, and so I just love how just it was a blessing just came back immediately when you do something. Um, but what was I about to say? Um, that's not what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about something that the epiphany that came for me. So we've been talking about these different things of right of 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 getting rid of and putting in this incinerator. I looked what an incinerator is. It's putting toxic hazardous materials into a thing to be burned away, into this machine to be burned away. It could be different various things that you could put into the incinerator. And so that's why in that Sagittarius energy, we are putting these toxic um, ideologies into the incinerator. We're putting our toxic belief systems into the incinerator. We're putting um, how we, act toxic to even to ourselves and how we bound ourselves to these societal uh, norms views and everything like that right so i believe like i told y'all this whole um concept of a biological clock for your uterus that time frame that you, and pressure we have that place on women for a uterus put that in the incinerator um this concept of what it means to be a wife how you should act to be a wife put that shit in an incinerator because at the end of the day if a nigga gonna love you he gonna love you put in this hatred towards the opposite sex within black community into the incinerator right and so i keep continuing now after talking about that i keep continuing to now start to get spirit has been showing me content of black women happily married happily in relationships happily taken care of I literally just watched before I did this. I need to put this in the incinerator. Shut up. <laughs> but anyways, how um, this girl, she just talked about how she got married. Her husband moved her into his home. He kept, he had her kept, okay? And she, um, he bought her a Mercedes and everything. She talked about how all these women came to her with this negative views and like you shouldn't trust and da -da 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 -da, you need to put that in your name and all these things with these negative rhetorics against black men and women marrying black men and i was reading the comments in her in her post and other women were talking about women said the same thing to me it was like when i talked about my husband i talked about how good he was to me um how he just took care of me and things like that women started to, to make up lies about him um because they were jealous it felt like i was bragging it was like they felt like they were bragging about 
the goodness of their husbands, the goodness of their black kings, okay, their black husbands. And so a lot of women now be talking about you need to marry white, right? You need to marry the white man and things like that to get a good love affair and things and all this nature. When it's like, you just got to be patient. You got to be patient. Like, who's for you is who's for you, right? Um, you have to also take accountability for who you're choosing. And that's why I told y'all, like, I'm a tr I attract emotionally unavailable men because, bitch, I'm emotionally unavailable. I <laughs> that's me, too, right? And so I have fun with those connections and I go through the whole series of, 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 of the whole thing, right? Because that's that's what I've been prepared for. That's what I'm emotionally available for is those short-term little love affairs and things like that. Um, and how just not ready yet I am for a long-term commitment even though I have tried to watch the things, try to prepare myself to be this certain way, right? But then I started to think, and Spirit was like, let them know something. And so what I have observed is that a lot of women are now in these spaces of being the healer, being the diviner, being a reader and things like that, right? And so they put they place themselves or spirit placed them into being that to being a messenger and they've taken that role to be hella judgmental to be hella judgy on on women of all degrees of all levels right and sometimes their messages is kind of coming with this energy of kind of like you're not doing it right you're not doing life right you're not <laughs> doing this and that and the right you need to improve constantly right so then you get connected into this spirit realm i mean to the spiritual side to the spiritual community and it's constantly like what you need to improve on what you needed this what you needed that what you need to do this that and third and it's like god damn bitch can you can you say i'm doing a good job today can you tell you i'm doing a good job and saying you need to release this you need to do this you need to do that you need to change this you need to change your mind you need to blah, 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 right and spirits told me to tell y'all you're just fine you're fine you are great. You are right exactly where you're supposed to be. If you hoeing, that's your whole season. It's your season to do that. It's your moment to do that. If you broke, it's your season to be broke. You're in alignment for that. You have your lessons for that. And sometimes they get, they start, they find a way to make it lucrative, right? Make spirituality lucrative. And so I think if we're thinking about it from a capitalistic way, right? The beauty community, the beauty industry wants you to continue to buy makeup, continue to buy this, that, and the third. So they're going to constantly tell you, this is wrong with your skin. This is wrong with your beauty. You need to put lashes on. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to blah, 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 right? So that you could continue to go buy the products. They're not going to say you're beautiful just as you are. They're not going to say that message because they want to capitalize off of your insecurity. Same with the spiritual community. They're going to tell you you're doing you this, this, that, and the third so that they could capitalize off of your healing. Capitalize off of your insecurity of thinking that you're not right with where you're at. You're not right as a person, right? So yes, we are going to continue to grow, but you gotta have to have experiences so you can learn for you to grow. You can't constantly be scared and timid of, of acting a way that you feel called to be because you wanna look as like a divine being or a divine feminine or divine masculine or whatever whatever you're still divine you're still in your divinity even if you're sleeping around you know even if you're sleeping around you're still a beautiful person even if you shake your ass for money right so spirit was like don't be having these girls be placed in this in this situation in this 
position to where they're judging you. Just because she could read energy doesn't mean she's right. Doesn't mean she's your God. Doesn't mean that you need to be constantly listening to her words and feeding it into your mind, right? Making yourself insecure and things like that. Take your journey. It's not your journey to learn self-respect just yet, <laughs> right? It might not be your season to learn your self-respect just yet. It may not be your season to close your legs just yet. You got more three more dicks in you before you do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so the concept and the purpose of enlightenment is to focus on you, right? Not on other people. And I think that sometimes spiritualists are so focused on other people and judging them for what they're doing, how they're moving, how they're navigating and things like that. that they're not looking at themselves. Or even so, they're harshly judging themselves. And so even though even though we're supposed to embody working towards being right, like in the Hindu said, the per your perfect Godhead, right? Your supreme Godhead, be as close as you can to being God. You have your whole life, you have your whole lifetime in this in this year, you know, not this year, but in your life to, to work towards that goal. You don't have to have it all figured out and all right, right now, today, at 23, at 28, at 31, at 43, at 47, at 56, at 88, right? You can continue to work on it. That is a continual goal, but you're going to have to have the experiences. You're gonna to have to make mistakes. You're gonna to have to go against yourself. You're gonna to have to contradict yourself. You're gonna to have to be a hypocrite. You're gonna to have to be all of those things. Because at the end of the day, everybody falls short of the glory of God, right? You're still going to fall short. You're still not going to be 100%. There's always going to be areas of growth. But don't, just because she's a reader, you know, we all have these psychic gifts. But the psychic gifts is not synonymous to enlightenment. Some of them are psychically gifted. We're still operating in their ego. And so, again, the song by Salt and Pepper was, if I wanted to take a guy home with me tonight, it is none of your motherfucking business. And if she, if she wants to be a freak and sell it on a weekend, it is none of your motherfucking business. is none of their business what you decide to do how you grow how you operate and navigate do i need to move do i need to move am i in the way do i need to move do i need to move no okay i don't think they understand me um but if she want to be a freak and sell it on the weekend it's none of your business right it's none of it's none of our business my spirituality my journey of being a leader my journey of being um a healer a conduit whatever whatever it's none of my business to to judge you or to castrize you or to dim you for for how you are it's just like to encourage you it's to nurture you it's to say hey babes what's going on let's go deeper into it let's go deeper into the actions let's go deeper into the understanding but with compassion with empathy and not this state of judging you and not thinking like like but you need to get on my level like no no and so you a sex worker you could come get recce healing for me you <laughs> You can get a reading from me, and I'm not going to be over here using my platform to judge and, and, and criticize you for what you decide to do with your coochie. Just like it's no one's place to do, to criticize, to judge me for what I do with my coochie. You know what I mean? Um, and so we are getting into this energy, into this level to where it's like you're going to have to stop 
judging people. And that's what we are all doing. We're putting that judgment towards other people into the incinerator. You know? No more judging folks for what they're doing with their own life. We don't know their path. God may specifically put you into sex work so you can learn and you can understand this, that, and the third. So then later when you're put into the position to, to teach, when you're in a position to lead, you could you you could help that group of people. You could help those group of people. And be like, bitch, girl, I was there, I was with you, and this is how I changed. And now you're relatable compared to you going to somebody who ain't never been in that but has so much to say about it. Right? They have so much to say about it. Same with, it's like, if you was in the streets, you was game banging and shit like that, it's nobody's business to judge you for what you did in the streets, for being in the streets, to being a part of the streets. You was meant to, so that when it's time for you to be in your position, when there's there's people coming from, from the streets also, they feel more relatable to you. You have a better ne a message. You have more empathy. You have more compassion. You have all this understanding for them. Leave like you know what this is. This is what happened to me. Da -da 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 -da. This is what changed me. Blah 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 blah. And then they they can listen. They're more receptive. People aren't going to be receptive to you bashing. Again, awesome. I don't give a fuck how gifted a person is. Don't ever have nobody disrespecting you. Just because they post videos, just because they have a certain amount of followings, subscribers, whatever, it's never their place to be talking to you all types of crazy. Why are you being rude to the folks? These are the same folks just putting money into your pocket. That's sustaining you. That's making you relevant. Why are you yelling at them? Why are you disrespecting them? Why are you being rude and nasty? You don't want that. That's a person who who really not doing the work. They just regurgitating some stuff. We are all intuitive. So don't put another person's intuitive nature above yours. And have them talking to you all crazy, all types of ways, making you feel low, making you feel like you're not doing enough, making it sound like you're not being enough. Making you feel like it's lesser than. Because best believe there, there's some actions that they're doing that you could easily have some judgments against them too. Period. And we're put and I just want to say we're putting those folks in the incinerator too. I was thinking about you know, I like to watch the pick of cards where of upliftment like let me hype you up let me gas you up what makes you attractive i like those more than like what you need to heal what you need to release and all those things because it's like I'm tired of y'all telling me what to do <laughs> but not also that but like you gotta you gotta experience more to heal you can't keep killing the same same situation the same shit I healed the things that happened in childhood. I healed the things that... I addressed those things, right? But now, I gotta have a new experience. I have to have experienced new hurts, new pains, new mistakes, you know? New levels of toxicity in order for me to grow, in order for me to heal, in order for me to evolve, in order for me to level up even deeper and bigger. So just consider that. Think about that. That was it. That's all I had to say. But I just thought about that dog. 
Shout out to Spirit. Even when you give to animals, Spirit will bless you. Right, one more thing. I was watching this reel of this guy. He made a reel of him helping this guy off on the streets and fed him and got him some meals and stuff like that. But he recorded the whole thing. And I was thinking, I'm like, okay, like I get the sentiment and whatever it was. But What's with y'all in that? Like, I'm thinking, like, as someone who's homeless, right? As somebody who's on the streets and homeless. If somebody in my lowest moment, in my lowest time, when I'm 30, when I'm this, that, and the third, if you got a camera in my face while you helping me, that would piss me off. And you putting it on, 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 on the social media, it's bad enough. Like, when you homeless, you don't, want, you don't really want people seeing you. You want to be low-key. You want to be, you know, in a cut somewhere. I'll be looking at everybody who be homeless. Everybody be in a cut. Everybody be tucked away. Every, and then you, we might walk to go get something. We might walk to go do something or whatever. But everybody be low-key. Everybody don't want to really be seen like that, right? You don't want to be in certain spaces because you think about your smell. You think about this. You think about that. And then here comes somebody putting that on your lowest moment. You at your lowest on internet because they want to get the accolades of of being charitable of being good-hearted of being whatever whatever that feel, feel, feeds their energy it's weird like i just felt like i'd rather him tell the story or not say it at all and give the blessing to the band without the clout without the without the monetization of it And so I think, so I just be thinking about this like social media stuff. And I, I think that social media, we're losing this concept of, of people's privacy. And, and I was just thinking about even the whole Cassie thing, right? The whole Cassie situation. That was her at her lowest moment, an embarrassing moment. And y'all keep reposting it making it a blog making it this making it that without regards to her without the guards you know can you imagine you got beaten and you already humiliated by that situation and then clips keep showing of it of your abuse clips keep being shown of your abuse like what like that sh that video should have never been released to the internet that that piece of footage should only have been released to the court if y'all had those footages all along and y'all know that she's been fighting in court cases, why didn't y'all submit that to her lawyer? Why I post it on the media? And then people who want to who wanna monetize on their own blogs, on their own channels and things like that, replaying those clips for their and giving their two cents for the monetization of it. And I just think that we lose human we lose the game concept of human decency of human privacy because we want to put everything on the internet of somebody's private moment of somebody's lowest of the low of their absolute low moment not everything needs your two cents and even thinking just about celebrity culture in in general right like we Tackle, right? Like I'm thinking about like what's her name, Jaguar, right? Like that to me, that lady is weird. Like she weird, but y'all be like she know everything that happened in the industry. She know that it's that and the third and the third. But it's like if you was a part of that, if you saw that shit, not every story needs to be told. Not every story needs to be told. Even the, the even this concept of like okay, so let's talk about like Diddy, right? And everybody talking about how he likes men. And he's into like freaky shit and he has a freaky party and things like that. Well, people know that, then why do they continue to go and go to his party? And if that's something that he's into, just because he's a celebrity, that's none of our business. 
if a man is into to, to freaky shit with other men, that's none of my business. That's none of your business, right? But we forget that these people are human, and it's like, why are you telling all of this business, all they business, to to the regular public for recognition, for this, that, and the third? Again, that's none of your business. If you want to share a story that happened to you, that's different. Share you. If you got a clip in a video of something happening to you, share that. If you want to show a video of somebody giving to you, share that. Nobody wants to share their shit. Nobody want to share their low moments. Nobody want to share, tell their stories about shit and shit like that. But they're quick to tell somebody else's. And that's why I can't stand gossipers. Because people be gossiping about other folks' business. And it's like, that wasn't your business to tell. That wasn't your business to tell. Even somebody's good news ain't your business to tell. Allow them to tell it. So it was just things that I just thought about. And it was just like... But ultimately, Spirit was just saying that don't be, you know... Don't be letting these girls get get to y'all heads and letting them and their egos get to they to your head because just because they have a certain following, you don't gotta listen to every little motherfucking thing they say. And you don't have to internalize and the the, the judgments that they have. You don't know what the work they got still need to get done. You don't know what they be doing on the low. Be mindful. Be conscious of that when you thinking about these killers and things like that. If she not sharing her shit, she ain't telling you her business, she ain't talking about her toxicity, then don't let her keep continuously over and over again bashing you or trying to tell you about you. I, I, specifically, I specifically, specifically tell my shit my journey my action i show you my lowest moments on my own and from there i give you a message of encouragement from there the relatability then you could be like girl i'm dealing with that too i've been there too i've got a lot too right i'm struggling with that too instead of me pointing fingers and wagging a finger at you. So just be mindful of that, okay? Because it's very easy to watch, to listen. And, you know, it's the same rhetoric over and over and over and over and over again. And nobody is sharing their shit. Sharing their story. But they taking your money to tell you your truth. But they ain't saying nothing about theirs. Okay. All right. So again, you know, it's our Negro spiritual. If I want to take a guy home with me tonight, it's none of your business. And if that bitch, if her ass want to be a freak and sell it on a weekend, it's none of your business. So you shouldn't be getting into who I'm giving skins to. It's none of your business. It's so dumb. <laughs> Y'all know, I, get, I only get so far with lyrics. <laughs> right? Because it's none of your business, right? Salt and pepper summer. Salt and pepper summer. Big lotto. Big remix. <laughs> summer. And we're going to add and sprinkle a little uh, a glorilla. And then we're going to have a dash of Sikiana in there, okay? I love y'all. But just uh, think about that, okay? <laughs>